According to statistics, only a small percentage of you who watch our videos are actually subscribed. If you're not subscribed yet and you enjoy what you see, do consider hitting the subscribe button. This encourages YouTube's algorithm in promoting more of our mental health content to more people out there. Hi, Psych2Goers. Do you marvel at how some people are always able to get their way? These are people who have extremely high manipulative tendencies. The reason they are hard to identify is that they employ rather innocent tactics. However, any innocent act when used with ill intent turns into a tool for manipulation. We would like to emphasize that just because you may believe one way or another, you are not automatically characterized as a master manipulator or a manipulator at all. These are simply trends, not hard and fast rules. So with that said, here are 10 signs that someone could be a master manipulator. Number one, they don't always seem intimidating. Did you know that many manipulators don't come off as intimidating? In fact, a classic characteristic of a master manipulator is their charm. Who knew? According to a study, master manipulators often use their charm to perpetuate a cycle of abuse. Though charm is often associated with a first impression, master manipulators use their trait to their advantage to reel someone back in or to mask negative thinking. Number two, they assume that humans are inherently evil. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Do you believe all humans are naturally good or naturally evil? Uh, according to psychologist Susan Whiteburn, many master manipulators tend to believe the latter. Master manipulators tend to believe that humans are inherently dishonest and are likely to take advantage of each other. Number three, they find a practical necessity for manipulation. Bending ethics, misleading others, or taking advantage of others for a greater benefit. Sound familiar? Master manipulators tend to justify a practical need for manipulation which could manifest in a number of ways. With their line of thinking, they are able to find justifications for their misdemeanors with ease. Providing reasoning or justification doesn't necessarily make someone manipulative, but it's a good indication that they aren't strongly opposed to the idea. Number four, they like to embellish stories. Do you know someone who likes to exaggerate or embellish details when they tell stories? Maybe they add in dialogue or moments that never really happened. Embellishment is pretty common and usually not ill-intentioned. However, at its core, it's still a form of manipulation. Often manipulators use this embellishing technique to sway their audience to feel a certain way or to gain empathy. Number five, their phrasing is ambiguous. Do they use phrases such as your choice, but paying attention to the language of a master manipulator can help you glimpse into their true intentions. While these phrases are not usually used with manipulative tendencies, they do tend to sway others into a different thinking pattern. You are unconsciously steered into doing it just their way because such expressions elicit an accommodating attitude on the receiving end. Number six, they use passive aggressiveness. Has anyone ever used the silent treatment on you? It makes you wanna do anything possible, even against your will, to get them to talk to you again, right? It might be considered agonizing at best and painful at worst. The silent treatment is one of the examples of passive aggressiveness contributing to manipulation. It might seem less invasive, but is equally potent. Some people tend to use such passive aggressive actions to guilt or shame others into compliance. Other common examples of passive aggressiveness are snide comments and even gossip. Yikes. Number seven, they often use others for personal gain. Do you know someone who tends to always use others as a shield in the face of even the slightest adversity? If so, it's a kind of coping mechanism that they employ. The underlying mental disorder causes potential effects on their moods, which encourages manipulative behavior in them. And if their maladaptive coping mechanism to the underlying disorder is to use people and take advantage of them, they may come off as a master manipulator. Number eight, you're scared to say no to them. Are you good at saying no, except when it comes to certain people? Are you scared of the way they may react? When you say no to a master manipulator, you might be afraid of the pressure they'll put on you to change your mind. If this is the case, know that you aren't weak for feeling the way you feel and that the most important thing is to prioritize your own peace. Being manipulated is never your fault, no matter how you're made to feel. Number nine, they talk in circles. Does it feel like any sticky conversation with them simply goes nowhere? That's because they're never gonna take you there. 
Master manipulators dodge questions they don't want to answer, change the subject a little too quickly, or deceive you into thinking you're wrong just to avoid admitting fault or compromising. They tend to be very intentional and precise with their language in these situations to avoid answering a question directly. While at the same time, trying to cover up and make the conversation progress as it naturally would, all in one go. And number 10, they're diagnosed with a personality disorder. Did you know that manipulation more often than not can be a sign of a range of personality disorders? Psychologists suggest that in addition to Machiavellianism, personality disorders such as borderline personality disorder, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, bipolar disorder, and antisocial personality disorder can all increase someone's tendency to be manipulative. However, it's important to note that acting on these tendencies is still a choice and having a personality disorder does not automatically make anyone a master manipulator. Although it's common to want everything to go your way, this might get in the way of healthy long-term relationships. It's always a good approach to seek professional help in assisting you to explore the reasons for your exhibiting manipulative tendencies or to heal from its experience. It helps to recognize reasons preventing you from making meaningful and healthy relationships and friendships with others. Do any of these describe your experience? Leave a comment down below about your encounters with them if you'd like. Please feel free to share any thoughts you have as well. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share it with those out there in the clutches of manipulation. Don't forget to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more new videos. As always, thanks for watching.